audience, if you can hear us okay, can you just use the raise hand feature? Right now all participants are on mute, but we want to be sure that you're hearing us okay. Excellent. Thanks, guys. Good to go. All right. So thank you again for joining us. This is the Enhancing Family Engagement webinar, and we are really excited to have you back. There's a large number of you on today's call, so I wanted to make sure that um, we go through just some of the protocols and make sure that you all have the optimum experience. So if you could make sure you're closing any windows or programs that you may have open on your computer so that way you're able to actively see the screen and participate as we go along. Um, you shouldn't need to mute your microphone or um, phone at this point, but you may want to do that just as a precaution. Like I said, all participants are on mute right now, so if you do have a question, um, you can use the question box feature on the toolbar, and um, you can go ahead and type the questions. We have someone monitoring those, and we've got built-in time throughout the webinar where we can address questions as they happen. And then the other tip for you would be to just minimize that dashboard, um, and that way you're able to see the full slides as we go. I just want to also let you know that today's webinar is being recorded with the potential of being posted on Engage New York. And I'm going to turn it over to Julia to introduce you to um, the guests that we have with us today. Good afternoon, everyone. This is Julia Rachel Bear. I've worked with many of you over the last few years. And we are really excited right now to be extending this opportunity to you today. And we really hope that you're able to walk away with a better understanding of how you might think about engaging your families as partners um, and learning from some of our other districts. With us today are Courtney Jablonski, whom you've obviously met, um, Marianne Litzman, who is the STLE Grant Coordinator and Assistant Superintendent for Curriculum and Instruction in Hicksville. Marianne has brought Susan, Mara, Chris, Maureen, and Teresa with her today to share their experiences in building strong homeschool connections with teachers and families. We want to thank each of you for joining us this afternoon. And before jumping into the content, I want to share a warm welcome to our STLE 3 grant recipients who may be joining us now for the first time today. There is a wealth of experience to draw from with our now over 170 districts that are involved with the STLE grant. As we come to visit our STLE districts across the state, we get to hear trends from our grantees about areas that they're struggling with and areas that they feel are stronger in their programs. So our goal with these webinars is that we're really trying to just focus on spotlighting some of the strong practices that we think that other grantees might benefit from learning from as we've heard these trends during our visits. We hope that today's session will offer you a chance to both reflect internally as a team upon the importance of partnering with families, as well as provide you with concrete examples of ways your colleagues have worked to enhance this relationship. The questions posed and the action planning tool that we provided to you are meant to help guide you and your teams in the development and enhancement for partnering with families at the classroom, school, or district level. So here on this slide, you see an overview of the session for today. The Common Core Standards help to create clear expectations for what children should know and be able to do in key areas of reading, writing, speaking, and listening, language, and mathematics. We know that if parents and families know what these expectations are, then they can better work with schools to prepare children for success. Over the course of today's session, you'll have time to reflect upon your current family engagement efforts, identify areas of strength and areas that could be enhanced, and then from there we're going to go on to share what others have found to be foundational to strong and positive homeschool connections. The bulk of today's session is going to be spent examining resources and examples of how you and your colleagues have approached this work. After seeing and hearing concrete examples of the family engagement work happening in areas across the state, there's going to be time that's dedicated to allow for you to reflect upon your own practices and strategically plan possible next steps for strengthening the homeschool connection at the district, building, or classroom level. So prior to this webinar, we sent out a document that was meant to help guide your reflections upon your um, family engagement strategies that you have in place currently. And it's supposed to be able to help strategically plan for the future as well. If you've got this document handy, it would be really helpful to pull that out now. And we'll also provide you with some time um, here to reflect upon some of these questions. Our ultimate goal is to ensure that information and expectations are clearly communicated and regularly re revisited to ensure that all parties have the proper resources needed to fully support students throughout their academic careers. So let's take a few minutes now to revisit this portion of the document. Um, it was meant to be utilized prior to attending, but 
we wanted to hear from you. What do you see as the strengths and limitations to the methods that you're currently using in your district um, at the building level, the classroom level, the district level to engage your parents and families? What areas do you want to continue to focus on or enhance as you go and expand your efforts to engage more families in this educational partnership? And then also, do you have any other questions that you want to um, put out to us within the question box that we can try to address as we move through the webinar? So I'm going to put ourselves on mute for just a few minutes, um, and we'll revisit in about three minutes. And like I said, if you have any questions you'd like to pose at this point, you can send those in through the question box. In about one minute, I'd love to see if you can use the chat feature on your toolbar to also talk about um, and share with us any areas in which you are hoping to be able to expand your partnership with parents. Um, we'll look for trends across this and then also be able to connect that to the information that you're about to see today. So about one more minute, we'll come back together as a group. So it looks as though from the, some of the responses coming in that there are a few places that are trying to look at how to engage more families, and in particular they mentioned the middle school and high school area. Um, and a second trend that was coming across was how do you allow parents a more hands-on approach to understanding the Common Core, opening up classrooms. Um, and it looks like a question was posed to us in how do we help teachers to understand um, the importance of engaging families and how do we make them part of that process. So with what we have today um, going, I can assure you we're going to tackle those few questions. You're going to get to see and hear from some of our grantees um, concrete examples of how they're tackling similar work. So we encourage you to use the second portion of this action planning template to jot down examples of the work that you'll see, references made throughout the webinar that you may like to revisit or incorporate into your own work as we go forward. Um, additionally, as Julia had said earlier, you're going to be provided with time to brainstorm possible next steps or resources that may be necessary after really identifying those key areas um, that you'd like to hone in on. Family involvement plays an important role in creating successful students in schools. Promoting and increasing family involvement within the school community allows for a greater potential for increased student achievement and collaboration between caregivers and schools. Today, we're going to be highlighting ways in which supportive and sustaining relationships can be built with the help of teachers, principals, and district leadership. We're going to first start by looking at some of the existing resources that are available on Engage New York to support family engagement, and we'll also discuss some of the important aspects and foundations of successful family engagement strategies. In order for a successful homeschool relationship to evolve, roles and responsibilities for all involved should be clearly defined and continuously communicated. As you will hear and see today, homeschool engagement efforts can take many forms. Regardless of the form of communication, once a relationship has been established, it is essential to nurture and sustain this bond in order for everyone, including the students, to fully reap the benefits. By informing families, enlisting their help, and listening to their ideas for preparing students, school leaders can form an alliance with parents that can have benefits for schools and families alike. 
Everyone gains when students are successful in schools and graduate well prepared to achieve future dreams. When we look at districts who have seen success in their family engagement strategies, there are some clear trends that emerge. This slide lays out a few of the principles of successful family engagement from some of our STLE grantees. First, schools, just as our communities, are made up of students who come from a variety of backgrounds, cultures, and contexts. When considering your own family engagement strategies, it's important to begin with the mindset that any strategy will need to be differentiated in order to reach all families. Districts who have found success in their family engagement strategies have done so by first finding ways to involve caregivers that reflect a true, deep understanding of their diverse needs and interests. Second, it's always important to remember that ultimately all community members want what's best for students. When a parent or guardian is able to clearly see how the academic goals of their school align with the aspirations that they hold for their child, there's a greater sense in shared responsibility, which can help to foster the homeschool interaction that can ultimately lead to increased student achievement. Finally, when districts and schools promote and work toward increasing family involvement within the school community, and when school staff and families are provided with a means to meet that goal, the district has great potential to build productive and sustaining relationships that will have a lasting impact, not only on school, but on those at home and the students as well. It's important for districts to regularly revisit their expectations and create feedback loops that allow for community members to provide their input on initiatives. This will allow for mid-course correction and for deeper impact. When we talk with districts who are focused on parent engagement, we hear a consistent theme. Their students are more successful, both academically and social emotionally, when the homeschool relationship is positive and sustaining. When schools and districts work to foster their relationship with families, the benefits are widespread and can extend beyond the classroom walls. It's because of the impact that a homeschool relationship can have on all stakeholders involved that's important to reflect on our current practices and take proactive steps to continue to build positive and lasting relationships. When speaking with our districts, themes emerge around the types of proactive steps they're taking and the types of barriers they first faced in their efforts. Some common barriers that can make it more difficult for both parents and schools to form lasting relationships may include parents lacking an understanding of the school's program and their role in their child's education, parents' own personal negative school experiences influencing their present views, schools or districts not encouraging or soliciting parent input in a way that meets the needs, culture, or background of the family, schools not having effective school-to-home communication policy or parents lacking awareness of policies. But as time goes by, both schools and families may become unsure as to how to overcome these types of issues. In order to limit or eliminate the barriers that can affect the formation of positive home and school relationships, proactive steps or solutions can be developed. Some of the possible steps that we've heard from our grantees have included things that you see on this slide. So districts and schools that are working with families to create that shared vision for parent involvement, where the administration models and sets very clear expectations for how staff should behave when they're communicating with families. We hear stories about success when schools align their instructional goals with the interests and aspirations of the community, soliciting input from multiple stakeholders. Schools that find different avenues to communicate with families that really take into account that, that deep understanding of the needs and the cultures and the background of families have proven very successful with many of our grantees. And finally, a, a trend that we often hear is how districts and schools are working and working relentlessly with teachers and caregivers to find efficient and effective ways in which they can regularly communicate and then using feedback loops to make sure that communication is working. Let's look now at some of the resources the department offers on Engage New York to support family engagement. The department is deeply committed to supporting you in your work. Because we know that such a critical component of a student's success in school is dependent on how and what they learn at home, the department has developed a number of family resources that you can find on Engage New York. We encourage districts to use and build upon these resources as you support your families in your community, in your own engagement activities. We will continue to develop this toolkit further as we receive feedback from educators and families. Items such as checklists for planning a parent workshop, sample backpack guides, downloadable PowerPoints, and Common Core resources have been provided by the department in accessible formats so that they can be tailored to fit your individual context and needs. 
a critical component of a student's success in school will come from being able to have resources that are best suited for their needs. The toolkit for parents and families that's found on Engage New York is a collection of materials and resources that we hope will help families to understand the different initiatives that are going on across the state and how different changes will help your child graduate from high school, ready for college and careers. Included in this toolkit are event checklists, annotated agendas, slide presentations, and parent handouts that can be tailored to fit your individual content and needs. Now, I, I mentioned a few times this idea of being able to um, tailor these materials and to adapt them, and, and the department feels very strongly that you know, as much as possible, districts should take these materials and own them and, and be able to use them in ways that are more uh, tailored to your needs. Courtney has worked with a number of different districts um, in her former role as a network lead with the Wish We Bosies. Courtney, I'm wondering if maybe you could take some time and just share with folks on the call about how you use these materials and how you facilitated parent sessions in your component districts. Sure. We found um, the parent resource link off of Engage New York to be invaluable. Um, teachers and um, administrators within the schools knew that reaching out to parents was an integral part of their work. Um, we looked to this resource um, as a guide and a starting point, and we were overwhelmingly um, happy with the amount of resources available and really the depth that was available for the contextualization, as you were mentioning. Um, most often, um, districts were choosing to really start with an introductory session for parents, and so one of the most common tools we went to were the single night session or the two night session agendas that are provided here. Um, districts love the opportunity to be able to tailor those um, to their own needs. Oftentimes they used the video that was um, part of that material as an introduction to overarching Common Core and then tailored the rest of the night to really fit um, the grade levels that they had um, presented in the evening, whether it was a K-12 session or if they had narrowed that focus to a 3-8 um, or a middle school or high school level. Um, in addition to not only the agenda, the videos, um, and sort of the, the framework of the night session, there were many other supplemental materials here that came in handy. Um, and I can walk you through a few of those underneath the toolkit for parents and families. There were things that um, included additional video clips with examples from the classroom and then also handouts for parents. So let's unpack just a few of these for you. It's able to co-facilitate a lot of the sessions with districts. Um, you'll notice that the planning tools and agendas are provided um, for both a single night and a two night sessions. Um, as I mentioned, most districts chose to start with that single night agenda, and often it was a K-12 audience because they knew um, communication needed to be out to all um, families and that families had students at a variety of grade levels. Um, as we went through, districts would share their own vision around the Common Core implementation. They'd use their own graduation or student performance data to really reiterate the urgency and importance of the work. Um, the introductory session would almost always include high-level overview of the instructional shifts, comparing what was similar and different from um, what parents or guardians may have experienced in their own education. When you look at the toolkit for parents and families, um, underneath this you'll see um, the additional resources on this page, the parents' guide to the Common Core, and then also what parents can do to help their children. So these resources, as I was mentioning, um, were oftentimes handed out at those sessions. Um, there were many schools that used this during their open house or their curriculum nights to really get parents a sense of um, what they could expect their children to be experiencing in the classroom. We found the language to be really user-friendly, um, public-friendly, in a way that would be non-threatening to parents. Um, the toolkit that was about how can parents help their children at home really talked about the instructional shift, narrowing in on ELA and math, um, framing what it would look like for students to be able to um, engage in those instructional shifts, and then also being really helpful in saying how can a parent help to support this at home. Um, some of the best responses that we had from districts were when, uh, I'm sorry, from parents were when districts took this template and then added in their own supports that they could provide to students as well. Um, really saying, okay, if we're saying supply more nonfiction text, some of the teachers would add in examples of text that they had found to be really interesting for students at that grade level or connecting to their curriculum. Um, when we talk about um, using the primary source documents or asking for evidence, it, we saw districts adding in questions that parents could use over the dinner table to help guide those conversations. 
um, and make it really just the authentic conversations that started to happen in the homes. So right now, we've heard about some of the general principles and approaches that districts have taken from um, our SDLE visits and the reflections that we've heard there. You've heard about some reflections I had on past experience with districts. And we want to give you a chance to um, really think about this from your own perspective, too. We know that collaboration from all stakeholders is vital in creating policies and programs and activities. So I want to give you a few more minutes to think about proactive approaches that you could be taking to help engage families as partners. You can use the action planning template tool, again, to really capture your reflections. Um, I would love it if using it as a chat feature or the question feature, you could let us know if you've used any of the engaged resources that you've seen so far and what success or um, reflections you have about that. So we'll pause again for about four minutes for that reflection, and I'll check back in with you. I'm going to interrupt your thoughts for just a minute. We had a great comment from the field um, that people have found in the past um, that in the beginning, teachers weren't even confident in their own understanding of the Common Core. And so districts found it was really vital to provide teachers with models of how to do a parent night um, and that the PD around how to engage parents and that was really important. Um, I would love to hear kind of the progress of that and the reflection around it as we go. So maybe that's something we can revisit um, but I think it's a, a point well worth um, noting that, that all of us were on a learning curve with this at first, um, including the teachers and the administrators. And so those first few parent sessions truly were probably a, a we're going to give it our best shot and we'll, we know that continued work is going to be necessary to really make sure that all people are on the same page. A few other questions that came in, um, one was, are there any additional resources that parents could access to see what this Common Core looks like in practice? Um, and so I would again, kind of reference the idea off of Engage, there's the video clip um, section. And so within there, there are models of classrooms with students at various grade levels and subject areas engaged in common core practice. And so you may want to think about incorporating um, some of those short video clips into your parent night sessions. And there was a second um, question that was posed, what was the response or participation rate at those introductory nights versus any of your follow-up sessions? Um, in thinking about this one, I, the districts who embedded their introductory night into their um, open houses or curriculum nights, I think probably found a greater number of participants because that was a structure that parents were used to participating in. Um, I know in some of the districts there was much more interest in the Common Core 
um, initially, and so those introductory sections were pretty heavily attended. Um, but I did follow up with districts with, when they had those hands-on sessions, and um, again, the reflection was when those sessions were held at the home school for a student rather than a central location, they felt that they had better participation um, instead of bringing all parents to the, um, like a center auditorium per se. Um, so those are some of our own reflections. If you as um, participants in the webinar have other reflections around those two questions, you can always submit them through um, the chat box and remember to um, say, um, be sure that all audience can see that response and that way we can continue the conversation. For now I'm going to move on to um, taking a look at some of the um, other examples um, that we've got across the state before we get to Hicksville as our spotlight district today. So numerous districts obviously are taking on this initiative. Um, many of them include our STLE recipients with over 170 of you. Um, there's been some really success um, use of the informational forums to allow parents and um, dialogue to take place with school leaders and teachers on the topic such as the evaluation system, data-driven instruction, and common core. Um, typically the informational sessions have been large group sessions held at night and are framed as um, either introductions to those topics or um, the instructional shifts. And here you'll see, if you were to click on that link, um, an example of a flyer that Bethlehem Central School District um, used, and it references the uh, additional opportunities that they had built in for parents to personally experience the Common Core materials. Um, and you'll notice that they also used um, some sample questions within those sessions. I think, as Julia had said, the communities that we um, are involved in are diverse, and therefore our approaches to this in parent engagement should also be um, diversified. And so some schools are starting to incorporate additional interactive sessions as follow-ups to those introductory um, sessions. And so an example that we list here would be um, an event that took place at the Cross District um, Family Math Day that's hosted um, in Long Island, and it spans 11 different school districts coming together. Um, including two of our STLE grantees, Freeport and Malvern. So with those combined resources and efforts, this event is going to allow districts an opportunity to collaborate and plan a day for families to be engaged. Um, when you look through the flyer, it's going to consist over 60 hands-on math games and activities for both children and parents to become involved in. Um, and they've really narrowed that scope to the K-6 um, grade levels. So it's a great opportunity to not only share um, resources across, across districts, but also bring children into the experience with parents as well. Another venue that districts are starting to explore is the use of online videos. Um, I'm going to hold here because today we're going to hear from Hicksville Public Schools and how they're envisioning the use of videos to really support their consistent message around the instructional shifts um, and the implementation and how to best support um, families through this transition. I think one of the challenges that districts are faced with when they're thinking about um, developing engagement opportunities is finding the flexibility to accommodate um, parents and caregivers who may not be able to attend those um, in-person sessions. And so I just want to show you two other approaches um, that have really been um, exciting to see on the horizon here. So if we switch to look at the next screen, we'll see um, the East Mauritius Union Free School District has created a MOOC or a massive on open online course. Um, and this allows for ongoing engagement um, that can more easily fit into the various work schedules of our, our parents and guardians. This particular MOOC provides online opportunities to take courses, ask questions, and seek homework help, as well as connect parents um, and facilitate this ongoing communication. Um, the parent and family engagement course that you can see at the bottom of the screen in that screenshot includes videos that not only explain the common core standards, but also show actual classrooms where students and teachers are engaged in the work. Um, in addition, within this course, they have um, informational documents and links to external resources, um, some of which are actually the engaged resources. And this is a great opportunity for parents to be able to um, explore the resources on their own time and also still have um, a connection to the teachers who are helping to facilitate that um, MOOC. Parent universities are another way um, to provide parents and families with the necessary resources to help support their child's education. Um, examples of some of these resources might include access to workshops to strengthen their own skills, again, videos, 
question and answer sessions, homework help. Um, in Rochester City School Districts, the Parent University provides um, workshops to not only help parents um, strengthen their skills in supporting their kids, but also allows them to take a look at um, curriculum resources, really understanding the instructional shifts at the classroom level. This was um, offered with the Parent Leadership Academy to help prepare parents for leadership roles in parent organizations. Um, part of the um, development of this parent university and the maintenance of it is done through their instructional coaches, which are funded through STLE. And so it's great to see the different ways that um, districts are using those funds to really enhance their efforts. And finally, um, probably pretty common now, um, is the idea of a dedicated web page or a landing page where all of your resources for parents can be stored um, or easily accessed. And this really helps um, kind of create a one-stop portal to provide easy access to the items that you would like parents to be um, um, engaging with and, and accessing. So some districts have done this through building a private or a secure page, and some schools will have teachers even create their own pages as well. Um, we've seen some of our STLE grantees use the secure pages to allow educators um, to post videos and homework help tips for families. Um, and like I said, we're going to hear from a few of our grantees today um, around how they have incorporated um, or envision incorporating the idea of, of classroom videos and teacher leaders to help share this message with parents. In the um, essence of time here, we have a slide built in for further reflection. Um, I'd like to really gear this towards you thinking about um, what is working well with where you are in terms of your parent engagement and where you'd really like to see um, either increased effectiveness or enhancement. As you're doing this, um, we're going to um, begin to transition to our Hicksville folks to really hear some concrete examples of their vision for parent engagement. And so um, if you just take about two minutes here to reflect upon, all right, what are the strengths and limitations of our most current methods? And then where are the places that you may want to start to say, this might be a next step for us to either enhance or um, revise the strategies that you have in place? There was one question that came in um, asking who was responsible for creating and maintaining the MOOC. Um, when we had talked back to, um, with the, let me look back here at our notes, um, with East Mariches, it was a teacher, Emily Peterson, and also in collaboration with their superintendent, Dr. Charles Russo, the superintendent, who had originated the idea and really got it off the ground. And they had commented that since then, many other teachers have helped to contribute to the content and the upkeep of that MOOC. So it truly is a collaborative effort across the district. I think that as they saw success with it, many others began to see the value in that. 
um, resource for parents. All right, well, I'd like to take the opportunity now to introduce Marianne Litzman and her team from Hicksville Public Schools. They're here to share with us their experience around family engagement strategies. And so, Marianne, I'm going to turn it over to you. Thank you, and welcome to all our partners in education around New York State. And as each one of us speaks to the slides, we'll reintroduce ourselves um, from the beginning of the program when we were first introduced. But in our district, there's a shared vision uh, for strong homeschool partnership. And we build and strengthen that partnership with regular, meaningful communication. And we promote and support an integral role for parents in assisting student learning and providing opportunities for our students to volunteer in our school. Parents are full contributing partners on our site-based teams, working collaboratively with building principals and district-wide with our superintendent and PTA and PTA council. We know that providing information and resources um, to families about how to help students at home with homework and curriculum related activities and assisting with academic decisions improves student achievement and assists in setting high expectations for each child from the beginning of school in kindergarten through high school and planning for college so that every student meets with success and reaches their potential as a result of this homeschool partnership. Hi, this is Susan Giuliano, Director of Curriculum Instruction and Assessments in Hicksville. Thank you for having us. In strengthening our partnership with families, we looked at a number of factors, starting with recognizing that we, parents, teachers, and administrators, have a shared vision and that we all want what is best for the children that we share. There was a lot of misinformation out there in the social media in particular, and at the same time, parents were expressing an increased anxiety over the changes, particularly in math, compared to how they were once taught. We wanted to increase parents' understanding of the instructional shifts and to show them what it looks like in the classroom and a student works. We also wanted to use this opportunity to share what our students and teachers were doing in the classroom, how this instruction is aligned to the Common Core, the materials we are using in the classroom aligned to the Common Core, and share the resources that are available to parents to support their children at home. Hi, my name is Teresa Ecker. I'm the parent of four, four children in the Hickson School District. I help to play a supporting role for my children's teachers, offering help when needed, and making sure that each of them work to their potential. Over the two years of the grant funds, um, we used um, the funds to purchase iPads for all of our sixth grade students uh, during the first year of the grant. In the second year of the grant, we were able to sustain that with our local school budget for our seventh graders. So presently, all of our 6th and 7th graders have iPads, and we hope to um, use our local uh, budget for providing iPads for 8th grade students next year. So we are sustaining the work that we began with the grant. Uh, we also um, were able to partner with NASA BOCI staff developers who assisted in training our teachers in methods um, to effectively incorporate uh, and integrate this technology of iPads into our curriculum across all areas. And the grants also provided funds for the district to partner with Teachers College to provide professional development for all of our K-8 teachers implementing the writing project into our curriculum. And this was to strengthen um, our teachers' um, e implementation of the Common Core in the ELA. And um, we, it also provided us with funds to purchase the Common Core Aligned Math Program uh, to meet the rigor of the Common Core and leadership opportunities for our teachers uh, in, the relation, in the creation of a Homeschool Connection Teachers Academy, uh, where teachers create short videos accessible to students and parents at home, strengthening our homeschool partnership. This year, one of our goals was to strengthen the homeschool partnership surrounding parents' understanding of the Common Core standards and what instruction looks like within the Common Core classroom and also how parents can assist their children at home. We wanted to provide parents with a comfort level in understanding the Common Core, dispel misinformation, and provide resources available on Engage New York, the district website, and the online components for the new math program. We developed a district planning committee comprised of principals, curriculum supervisors, and teachers at all levels to plan district parent workshops that would be held at all nine of our school buildings throughout the district. 
We wanted to do this to enable parents to attend the workshops presented by their own administrators and their own teachers with the hope of maximizing parent participation. Um, we also wanted to address key components that represented the instructional shifts in ELA and math, K-12, and to provide model lessons and hands-on experiences for parents reflecting Common Core instruction in the classroom. Good afternoon. I'm Chris Scardino, elementary principal. Once the workshops were planned, we wanted to reach parents in as many ways as possible. We sent notices home in their backpacks. We had, uh, we had requested that our parents RSVP our presentations. We did a uh, district-wide parent link uh, call. We had uh, individual teachers uh, send invitations and reminders. We had our uh, building level and district website updated. We also had our PTA involved in sending out uh, reminders, which was very helpful. The workshops had a multi-leveled design. There was district and building level collaboration to design specifics, as well as a strong teacher-principal coordination of the interactive presentations. And there was an important component to our follow-up. For example, the next day, we had several photos on the website, as well as questions and answers to promote success and encourage participation at our next presentation. Hello, everyone. This is Mary George, middle school principal. At the secondary level, we have our challenges in sometimes reaching out to parents. So we took advantage of all opportunities for communication. We mailed notices home in advance of the workshops. We posted it on our website. Uh, we promoted it at all our events in the building and all evening events to remind parents of the upcoming workshops. I also promoted it directly at our PTSA meeting because our PTSA is a wonderful conduit to our other parents. We also made our flyers available throughout our building at our front desk, our main office, or guidance, any area where our parent might come into the building for a meeting or for other business. We also asked every teacher in the building that whenever they had parent communication prior to an upcoming workshop, that they made note that the workshop was ahead and to ask and invite parents to join them for that workshop. And on the next slide, you'll see, um, as a result of our committee work, we identified four topics for our parent presentations that would represent some of the key components of the Common Core in ELA and math, as well as highlight our new Go Math Elementary Math program and the Think Central online components that students and parents can access at home, which provide additional um, instructional supports that help to strengthen the homeschool connection. We did begin with um, an overview of understanding the Common Core state standards, you and your child, and then we worked into um, a math specific exploring the eight mathematical practices. Um, both of those first two workshops were K-12. The next uh, bullet down, Go Math and Think Central, of course, was for our uh, K-5 building. And then finally, we um, had a focus on ELA, understanding evidence-based reading and writing. These next slides are some of the screenshots of our presentations. We use these photographs to capture the implementation of the elementary math program. Um, as well as students and teachers participating in Common Core lessons as they locate and discuss text-based evidence, use digital resources, and persevere in solving math problems. We especially wanted to capture the level of student engagement and the excitement that the Common Core has affected in our students. The message we wanted parents to receive is the excitement and engagement of students in a Common Core classroom. Positive and encouraging was our message. Common Core classrooms are student-centered, high use of technology with smart boards, iPads, and computers in the classroom, turn and talk to each other on a frequent basis, group work, research reports, active presentations, a variety of literature selections, writing portfolios, and an increased use of advanced vocabulary clearly demonstrated on a daily basis. And at the middle school, we have the use of our iPads through the grant. And that, those ideas have strengthened our home connection and our partnership with parents. Our students were very excited about using this tool for learning, and they've been eager to share their new skills with their parents. Students are able to access their work via, from home via Google Docs and share their work with their parents when they are at home. Students are, uh, teachers are able to upload classwork, assignments, worksheets through Google Docs. And again, parents and students can work together at home on those daily assignments. Teachers and uh, 
upload to their web pages and through our district website all the same information which parents and students can access through their iPads and also at home. This is especially important for students who may not be able to be in the classroom on a particular day. They can access any missing material by going to the web pages and to Google Docs. This link provides our students um, a wonderful connection to their school even when home, but it also provides parents an important window into what is happening in their child's classroom each and every day, thus strengthening our homeschool connection. Hi, this is Maureen McMorrow. I'm a fifth grade classroom teacher here in Hicksville. One of the things that we want to show the parents is how classrooms today are different from what they might have experienced when they themselves were in grade school. So during the workshops, we displayed several of the anchor charts that are used in our classrooms, such as quotes reading strategies, norms for triad talk, which is what we use during our ELA lessons. Uh, we talked about the rationale of why the children are seated in groups instead of rows, so that way it can facilitate uh, partner work and turn and talk opportunities. Since our district's using the Teachers College Writing Project, we mentioned how the information writing unit is helping the students to express themselves in a more detailed way, and this can help them in all the content areas, not just in writing lessons. Uh, our math textbook series has the dry erase whiteboard, so we explained how we use that daily as a formative assessment to see which students might need some extra one-on-one -on -one attention in a math lesson, because as we said before, some of the parents have expressed that that's their area of highest anxiety is understanding the math lesson. So it was good to show them that we do give children more one-on-one -on -one attention to need it. Uh, we also discussed how the assignments that we've been doing this year and the assessments that we're creating this year mirror the length and the rigor of what will be expected of the students when they take the state assessment. So that way the students are building up their stamina as well as their proficiency. During the workshop, we also showed uh, videos from all different grade levels from the Engage New York website to show the parents, uh, just to see how the skills that we start in elementary school are built upon so that by the time they get to high school, it's not a, a brand new skill anymore. It's something that they've been doing right from the kindergarten level. And that way, they're comfortable using that particular format. Now, on the next slide, we have uh, some other things of what we did at the workshop where we presented or walked the family members through some actual lessons. So we didn't just give them jargon. We, we actually took them through lessons that we had used with our own children in the classroom. So for instance, at math workshops, they gave examples of what a question about decimals might have looked like before the Common Core came about, and then what it would look like today to show families how the children need to be able to explain their thinking and show their work in more depth. Uh, since we used the Engage New York ELA module, uh, we explained how the homework involved opportunities for parents to have discussions with their children about the content of, uh, for instance, the novel that we were using, or the Universal Declaration of Human Rights, which is something that we've been discussing in detail in fifth grade. Uh, since the children were reading the novel at home, uh, many of them expressed to us that the parents became interested in the novel and actually read it themselves. And they had kind of mini book groups at home to discuss what the book was about. And, and they, the children were excited to come to school and tell us how you know, mom was excited that certain characters were progressing in the novel. So it was, it was a good experience. Um, something else that we experience here in Hicksville, we have many English language learners, and their parents, for the most part, have not been able to really help them with ELA homework. So we sent home an audio CD of the novel that we've been reading. And two of the children came in and they said, well, you know, our parents have never helped us with ELA homework before, but we translated the, the CD as we read it along, and now our mom knows what the novel's about, and they've been having discussions about that. So it was a really great opportunity for parents who really have not been able to help their children in the past with their homework. Um, during the breakout sessions at the workshop, we had a primary teacher and an intermediate teacher at each workshop. So we would break up the audience into two groups by uh, their children's grade level. And we showed them the materials that we use, the manipulatives that are used. So for instance, the sticky page markers that the children love to use, we explained how they're used. We had the parents actually do the protocol, such as turning and talking to a partner about their findings. We explain concepts that might seem very advanced at the beginning of the unit are revisited weeks later when the children can have a better understanding of it. That way they understand that that's part of the close reading strategy, that it's not just close reading in a single session, but that it goes on for several weeks uh, revisiting that same document. And the parents appreciated this because they weren't necessarily aware that a unit of study could last several months and that it's not just something that takes place over a very short period of time. So that way the students could revisit those advanced concepts. 
At each session, we had opportunities for questions and answers, and we noted what these questions were, and all the answers were then typed up and put on the district's website with a link on the home page. So if the family couldn't attend, they would be able to then refer to um, some of the questions that they might have had a shared concern about. For our online parent resources, uh, as was mentioned, we used the GoMath textbook series, which has extensive online resources available. So at one of the workshops, the parents were shown how to go on to Source of Success, which is individualized assignments for their child. That also has online animated math models and online glossary. So that way parents could become more familiar with the new vocabulary uh, of, you know, maybe it's something different than what they learned, but it really is the same thing, just under a new name. And parents reacted positively to the availability of all these resources, especially the ones that are customized for their own child, because now they know that this is something that their own child has to work on. And as a classroom teacher, I've seen that this has eliminated, almost eliminated, requests from families to send home supplemental materials, because now they know exactly where they can go online to get these extra materials for their own children. Uh, each teacher in our district has a class web page that we update on a regular basis. And on those web pages, we have links to other websites that might be appropriate for additional practice or research for that grade level. Uh, some of the teachers in our district have videos of themselves teaching particular lessons so that families can refer to those at home for additional information. Um, on our website, we also have newsletters. Uh, for instance, we could explain what the children learned in class last week and where we're going with it this week. We provide links to websites for further information about that. And we also provide questions that the parents can ask their own child to delve deeper into what they discovered in class. Uh, we also use the agenda books that they write their homework in every night, so that can serve as a communication uh, means for parents to communicate with the teacher. And actually, we have extra help sessions that particular students are strongly encouraged to attend, but it's open to anybody who would like additional practice. So if a parent feels that their child didn't quite understand the homework, they can definitely come to extra help as well. As a parent, I have visit visited many of the websites recommended by our teachers. I've attended PTA meetings, especially where the issue of Common Core was to be a topic for discussion. I have also attended the multiple workshops that have been offered at my elementary school. The workshops definitely helped me to understand the thinking behind this new way of doing things. While my children really had no problem with the transition, I personally found it to be a little confusing. Attending the various workshops gave me the hands-on experience, helped me to understand the reasoning behind this new way of doing things, and offered me the same tools to use that the children have in their classrooms, like counters and sticky notes. As a parent, I try to be accessible whenever my children are doing their homework. If a question comes up that we can't figure out, we go straight to the corresponding website. We keep a positive attitude about the importance of homework and explain that taking tests helps us to see how they are progressing and where they may need a little help. I always stay in contact with their teachers and notify the teacher if there are any problems. I think that the Common Core provides children with multiple ways to figure out math problems and expands their vocabulary. It helps with their communication skills as they discuss various classwork problems together in the classroom. And it gives children more exposure to nonfiction books. I certainly believe it helps children be better prepared for college and their future careers. As we plan our workshops, we try to anticipate and address our challenges that we were facing. Scheduling is always a challenge. Um, another challenge was getting parents to come to the workshops, um, and once they were there, getting them actively involved. We also wanted to make sure that we delivered a consistent message in all of our nine school buildings. In reflecting on our successes, we felt that working as a committee, we were able to plan our presentation together and our talking points so that we did ensure that consistent message. We began our workshop series with an overview workshop that helped uh, to set the stage for workshops that would follow. Including teachers in the parent workshops was a huge success. This gave teachers the opportunity to show off their hard work with the Common Core, and parents were very pleased and excited that our resident experts, our teachers, were so prepared for the Common Core. Our teachers modeled lessons and planned learning activities that actively engaged our parents. Our teachers and administrators addressed any questions parents had, and questions from all the workshops were compiled into an FAQ, and we placed that on our district website. Hosting the workshops in our home buildings resulted in higher attendance rates than single-site district-wide workshops that we've had in the past. Our elementary math program was presented during a PTA meeting, helping us again to reach more parents. We also distributed parent resources posted on the Engage New York website and uh, provided those links for parents as well, as a reminder. 
In order to further strengthen our homeschool partnership, we've been able to use grant funds to establish our Homeschool Connection Teacher Academy. Mid-year, we wrote an amendment to appropriate funds to provide leadership opportunities for students to create instructional videos, short components of a lesson, a particular skill, a learning strategy or technique in a professional manner. By providing professional staff development and the use of a specialized microphone that they could use in contract while they were planning the lesson on their smart board, and recording and editing software. We plan to provide a school YouTube channel so parents and students may access these videos, and we'll provide that link through our district website. Also moving forward, we would like feedback from our parents, so we're going to be putting together a survey so that we can evaluate the work that we've done so far. And we want to be able to identify the needs of our families moving forward so that when we do reconvene our planning committee, we can make informed decisions as we schedule in our plan and plan our events for next year. The bullets listed uh, in the slide that you're looking at right now certainly outline our commitment to our community. Here are just a few other ideas to assist parents in strengthening their connection to schools and learning about the Common Core Standards. Embrace the invitations from schools and attend functions. Take advantage of these opportunities. Ask questions. Be involved each and every week. Set up teacher meetings to clarify concerns and encourage students to attend extra help sessions. In addition to what uh, Mr. Scardino has outlined, at the secondary level, I think the simplest advice that we can give, either for middle or high school, is that parents need to be more involved with their children and to stay involved at this level. As students progress through school, they're faced with more and more challenges, decisions that are more difficult, and greater learning opportunities. And we need to impress upon the parents that it's the time when they reach the secondary level when they have to be more involved, not less. And their parents' involvement, like was said, can take many forms. It can be as subtle as encouraging their children to connect with school through their attendance at events and activities and extra help. Another team opportunity, it can also be as direct as verifying grades every day and contacting a child's teachers when there's questions and concerns and keeping the lines of communication open. Most importantly, it should involve, and we have to impress the parents, daily conversations with their children, even at the secondary level, about what they've learned in school and how the parent can help them with that. Parents should be reminded that our children sense our anxiety but they also sense our excitement, so we need to lead by example. Parents need to remain calm and to make learning a partnership with their children, with their school, with support and encouragement, and by viewing challenges as opportunities, not stumbling blocks. Parents at the secondary level need to be reminded to take advantage of all the communication opportunities that exist by attending meetings themselves and workshops and events. They need to participate in their PTSA which is a very great conduit of information to keep them current on what's going on in school. They should be encouraged to visit the portal of their school, to visit websites, in particular their teacher web pages, to understand resources that are available that they can continue at home. And if, they're, if you're fortunate at your school like we are to have iPads, we want to definitely encourage your parents all the time to take use of what they can access from home and support their children on a daily basis. Parents need to be encouraged to, um, again, take advantage of learning opportunities and to make things exciting. This ranges from helping them to express their opinions on a daily basis and for exploring math problems that they may find in their home environment. It's important and imperative at the secondary level, and we always like to say this, that parents be informed and that they stay involved. Their students, their children, are the greatest conduit of information that we have from our buildings. So it's particularly important for us when we connect to our parents to maintain a positive building environment where, once again, students are encouraged to use challenges as opportunities rather than barriers to success. And what we do, and we recommend to everyone, is to set up those means and maintain them to maintain that parent communication through setting up team meetings, accessing information, having understand, parents understand how to access information, how to use the web pages, and all of this comes through in our workshops. And attendance at the district workshop is important. 
And one of the things that I noticed at the workshop that I presented at was we had a, a true cross-section of family members. We even had a grandfather there because he's the one who helped his grandchild with the homework. So I thought that was wonderful that he was there to really see what he could be doing to help that child out. And attendees seem to leave with a better understanding of what's truly involved in lessons that use the Common Core Learning Standards to see that concepts are still broken down in an age-appropriate way, that we're not getting them ready for a career in kindergarten, that it gradually builds to that point from kindergarten on up. And the parents appreciated that the standards are going to increase their child's understanding of concepts as well as their critical thinking skills. For the parents that can't attend the district workshop, work, work, workshops, I would say that they should not feel embarrassed about asking the teacher for guidance to help the children un understand the homework. Uh, for instance, if a child is expected to solve a math problem in more than one way, the parent might only know one way, the way that they were taught. So if they don't understand, for instance, the visual model, maybe they can ask the teacher for advice or visit the textbook series website for online tutorials. Uh, you know, Khan Academy, I know, is a popular website that uh, has more elementary resources this year, so I think that that's something that parents should be referred to as well. As parents and caregivers attend any and all workshops being offered by your school district, it's important to keep the lines of communication open with your child's teacher and principal, and to check out the many websites that are available to answer questions about Common Core. Keep a positive and supportive attitude. I have found that children feed off of their parents' reaction to change. If you're open to the new way of doing things, your child will be more accepted. Our advice for schools and in strengthening the homeschool partnership is to include administrators and teachers in the planning of presentations. We're very fortunate to have a strong partnership, and our teachers and administrators were very eager um, to volunteer, to plan these workshops, and present these workshops over multiple nights uh, because they wanted and felt very strongly about um, the importance of the Common Core and how we wanted to communicate that to parents and also include parents in our partnership of helping their child at home. Uh, the teacher representation at every level was important. We had our teachers from the uh, primary grades, intermediate grades, middle school grades, and our high school uh, present. And uh, all of our parents had an opportunity to uh, attend multiple presentations for that. The interactive part of workshops are very important for parents to actually experience what the children are uh, doing in school so that they, when the children come home, they have a good idea about what happened during the day and they can better support us at home. And also the TTA is a very important partnership as a global organization within the district uh, because we were able to do presentations, short presentations during the principal's report of each PTA meeting and um, that assisted in continuing our conversation about the Common Core. Uh, even throughout the day. We also were able to um, provide workshops during the day and night um, so the parents who couldn't come out in the evening could come to um, a centralized location during the day. And in the evening it was, as we said, that it was in each of the nine schools, but during the day we centralized that for some parents. Other important adv um, other advice that we would send to school districts is to uh, utilize all forms of communication as necessary, such as the district website and teacher web pages. Some parents only go onto their teacher's website, not necessarily the di district site. So make sure you're using all multiple um, locations in your website for that information. Uh, most districts now have mass calling systems. We found that this was very helpful when the paper and the flyer comes home for parents. I'm a parent too. I get that flyer and with all good intention, I'm planning on going to it and, and people forget about it because we all leave busy lives. So using that mass calling system provides another reminder um, that workshop is tomorrow night, and, and please uh, please attend. Holding presentations in home buildings was uh, beneficial for us. Again, um, we've had uh, district-wide presentations with one site in the past, and we did, didn't have the, the turnout that we had using um, our home buildings as our location. Uh, attending, uh, including presentations during the PTA meetings was uh, very helpful in eliciting the support of the PTA um, and participation of parents through that uh, organization. Multiple written communications and invitations was helpful for us. We sent the flyer. We had the mass calling system, but we also had our teachers send additional invitations, uh, personalized invitations to their uh, the parents of their classroom. And that sent a message to parents that, oh, yes, this is really important. My teacher, my child's teacher feels it's important for me to attend. I'm going to do that. Um, and, and again, we also had multiple uh, presentation opportunities. So when, if people work during the day, they could come in the evening. If they, came, if they work in the evening, they could come during the daytime. 
So we gave multiple presentation opportunities to reach all parents. And we're very appreciative and grateful, actually, for um, the SCLE grant, one, in providing us opportunities to bring programs into our district um, to strengthen our implementation of the Common Core, and also to provide um, recognition for our lead teachers uh, in working with parents and strengthening the home school um, connection. So thank you. Marianne, that uh, was fantastic. Thank you to you and your team. Um, the actual last comment you were having there around the, the work of your teacher leaders um, reflects kind of the common themes with a few questions that were coming in. So I want to pause here to ask you one question, and then we can revisit um, additional questions at the end of the session so that we can be respectful of people's time. Um, but the one question that came up a few different ways was, how were you able to um, provide time for teachers, one, to prepare these sessions, and also were there any additional training that you provided to your teacher leaders so that they felt comfortable um, presenting in these sessions? I believe you're speaking to our Homeschool Connection Teachers Academy. And uh, through the grant funds, we were able to provide a stipend for teachers uh, to create these videos. So the, video, the creation of videos were done outside of the school, um, the teaching day. The teacher could do it on the weekend after school. Um, and they can do it, of, of course, during the school day when they have um, you know, an opportunity uh, to do that in their classroom. It's not, the videos are not of students. They are actually of the teacher. You actually see the teacher. And many times, it's their writing on their smart board of a particular strategy or skill that um, students and parents can access at home to help them better understand a component of the lesson from that day or that week. Great. Thank you. Um, like I said, we can revisit additional questions if they come in after the official um, webinar time. But I want to turn now to our second district spotlight, which is um, actually going to be done through a quick viewing of a, a video clip here. I want to um, introduce the idea of South Huntington Union Free um, school districts had successfully utilized their teacher leaders, um, also funded through the STLE grant, to engage their families in conversation around the Common Core implementation through a similar pattern with parent academies. Our team was able to visit the district and capture their reflections from multiple stakeholders around that partnership that's been cultivated within and across their district. So I'm going to switch now to view this video, and like I said, it's about three minutes for you. This year has been phenomenal for my daughter. The participation that she's had in Ms. Brown's class, but also with the, the English module that they've been working on, has really allowed her to challenge herself in ways that she hasn't been able to. And the exactly exactly at first surviving, because that was the only, because that was the only thing you could do to survive. It was a harsh experience, but it did help them learn, and it helped them be, to become the alpha of the pack. We've had many opportunities to hear about the Common Core, to learn about um, what the children are being taught. I think that the district has been very candid about um, understanding that it's new for everyone and we're all kind of working together. I think the enthusiasm that their children are bringing to the classroom is just permeating right back down into the home environment. My kids, my children, when they go home, they're excited. They're telling each other what their homework is. They're reminding each other, don't forget, we have to do a second read of Chapter 7. And so I think that the message that they're bringing back into the home is that this is important work we're doing, and we have to do it together. The twofold goal was really to get parents to be instructional support uh, and partners at home on the one hand, and on the second hand, and equally important, to get parents on board with the fact that this was doable. Well, they invite you in. They, uh, the first thing they did, they did academies here, where they showed us. We went in, and you actually sat in the classroom with teachers, and they taught you examples of what your children are learning. Our teachers are great. They stepped up. They volunteered. They prepared um, evening sessions for our parents, where our parents got to uh, be in the classrooms and see and hear the things uh, 
explore the shifts for the teachers, ask questions, and see some of the resources that the teachers were suggesting. The parent academies and the workshops were there because we're not able to be successful in school as, as administrators, as teachers, without the support of what's happening at home. that they have. I know where to go to look for things. I mean, I go on Engage New York if I, if I have any questions. Both things have been relatively successful in getting parents to understand this is doable. We found that when parents are engaged, when parents feel like they, they have a seat at the table and they're heard, um, they become partners in making the process work. Great. So we're joined here today by Dr. Jared Bloom, who's the grant coordinator for South Huntington. And I'd like to just take one minute here to ask one question that came up as we were watching the video. Um, Jared, we're going to unmute you in just a second here as we go. Um, but the question is raised of where do you see this work going next? So just give us one second, and we're going to allow you to Can you hear us? Yep, I can hear you. Excellent. So where do you see this work going next, Jared? It's obvious that your staff's been super committed to this. You've, you've come a long way and have many pieces in place. What is, what's your vision for the future? So I think there's, there's a number of things. Number one, it's continued conversation with our parents and our teachers on a regular basis. Uh, in fact, we have on May 1st what we call uh, Parent University. So we have about 48 courses in English, Spanish, and Haitian Creole that are being offered. Many of those courses um, are centered around Common Core um, and engaging families. And so we uh, get donations of food. And so there's, there's uh, parents attend two workshops, a keynote, and they also get dinner. We offer child care. It's just an unbelievable uh, day and, and, and evening with parents in South Huntington. We have hundreds of parents that are uh, signed up to attend. And so that's really the, the next big piece that we have. And then it's, it's just ongoing work with, with lots of groups of parents. It's, it's uh, PTA council. It's, it's going to PTAs and working with parents. It's having additional parent academies. And then it's working with um, parents of students in, in various subgroups. Uh, we have a, um, a program that we just started that's been really, really successful with uh, many of our Spanish-speaking families where we're offering um, in the evening um, homework help for their children. And then we offer two what I'm calling periods. One period where they're going to almost like an ESL service, and the second period is uh, kind of job support skills help. Um, and so we're, we're building that relationship. And in those courses, we're embedding Common Core skills so that they can help their kids at home, plus their kids are getting um, support you know, in the next room on their homework. So it's really the, creating this, this community partnership across the board, making sure that we're reaching all of our families and really making sure that we're making the most of, of everything we're doing in South Huntington uh, to make sure every family can, can help their child. Fantastic. I think one of the common things I've heard from both you now, Jared, and also our Hicksville team is the idea that you've both been able to really think about what were the immediate next steps um, or opportunities that you could do that would help you move towards enhancing the areas that you've already had in place, how you are continuing to really narrow that focus to um, some of the limitations that you saw with your past practices um, to really expand your efforts in including parents. I want to just remind the field, I know there's been overwhelmingly um, a lot of information shared today, a lot of useful information, concrete examples of how districts have engaged their families and also resources for you to go and explore on your own. In the essence of time, we won't stop here to have you fill this in, but I do want to remind you of those final two columns in your action planning template 
are places where you can think about your immediate next steps um, and able to enhance your areas that you've noted as places you'd like to address. And there's also a column for you to note what resources that you currently have in place that can serve as a foundation, as well as note any additional resources that might be needed. And recognize that it can't be fully planned for in this short amount of time, but we want to encourage you um, to use the email address that's listed at the bottom of the page to send us any of your strategic plans, whether it's with this template or anything else, even if it's just a short description of your parent engagement activities. We'd love to have you submit that to us so that we can share and continue to uh, share with the field the best practices that are happening out there. I'd like to, again, just thank um, graciously for Hicksville for sharing their experience and knowledge with us today, as well as a thank you to South Huntington for both answering questions today, but also opening their doors to our camera crew. Uh, NICE has committed to providing the district and both these leaders support as they continue this critical work. And there are a number of resources available, including those resources previously mentioned today. So please remember that the Improving Practice landing page posts a range of information, such as ongoing professional development opportunities, STLE resources, and highlights of the STLE grantee activities. Today's slides and video clips are going to be posted here for future access. Our next webinar is going to be focused on the ways in which the STEM initiatives are taking form in our districts. And we're hoping to be able to have representatives from STLE grantees that are taking on the work of STEM initiatives at the elementary, middle, and high school levels. Please let us know if you're interested in presenting in this type of a session, as well as if you have an interest in sharing or presenting other work around other topics with us. You can send us your interest through using, again, the STLE uh, email address listed at the bottom of the page. And in addition, we'll continue to post updated district news clips around your STLE initiatives. So don't forget to send us your links to your local media coverage. We'd love to be able to share your celebrations with the field at large. You can always contact your STLE coordinator if you have any questions, and also if you have anything you'd like us to consider for use. So thanks again to each of you joining us today. If you have any additional questions, both um, district coordinators' information can be found within their district abstract, or you can always send us your questions, and we'll be sure to try to get you the information that you're looking for. Thanks so much, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye.